The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. Tom's going to join us right after the first break. Right now, markets in all-time highs. We start off December 16th, Monday morning, 30 minutes in the trading day. We have the S&P at an all-time high right up against it. We got an all-time high today, currently up 23 points or more than seven-tenths in the green, trading at 31.91. NASDAQ up 76. That's almost nine-tenths percent, trading at 88.11. We've got the Dow up 157 points, more than half a percent, trading at 28,292. I covered it. In the, nine, in the, excuse me, 10 o'clock update, and it would have been the 9 o'clock update, but got to cover it again for the beginning of the program. Quite a handle on the VIX, very little volatility, very little fear. 12 on the dot, we, we did have an 11 handle just a few minutes ago, but as you'd expect, it seems like regardless of if there's details or not in the potential phase one deal with China, it seems to have at least stalled the new tariffs that were going to go into place on Sunday, the market taking the fear out of its way, Right now, record highs, and we'll start things off. Let's jump over to some of the charts. We'll start it off with the indices. There's your Dow, quite an acceleration right out of the gate. We were about 80 to 100 points higher. Right out of the gate, we trade positive 28,314 in the Dow. NASDAQ 100, trading higher right into the opening bell, and then you get a pop as well. Even from the opening bell, we go 85.72. We're now right at 8,600, we'll call it, in the NASDAQ 100. S&Ps making almost an all-time high as we speak, 31.96. Looking at the March contract, we very well may get a 3,200 print by the time we're off the air or even today. Gold contract, 14.82, holding up well in the face of continued market strength. And crude oil above $60, $60.08. .60 Jumping over to the Forex market, a little bit of dollar weakness. I believe the dollar index a basket of currencies that we cover many times is now under 97. We'll jump to that when Tom gets in here. And 111.57 right now on the euro. In terms of what else is happening across the market, jumping to some of the stories driving the action. One story I liked this morning on CNBC we'll cover. So Goldman out there talking about one of the big worries is the decline in stock buybacks. Of course, massive corporate tax cuts, a lot of that going to share buybacks Buybacks this year alone down 15%, according to Goldman Sachs. They expect a further 5% decline in 2020, something I found pretty remarkable. The demand created by buybacks has outpaced demand from other sources, such as mutual funds, since 2011. That's eight years that companies buying back their own shares has outpaced demand from other sources like mutual funds. That is quite a number. Giving repurchases increased importance in the U.S. market. They bring that down even to how it shapes earnings. And so Goldman estimates the buybacks will be down 15% to $710 billion this year and declining another 5% in 2020. Earnings per share, this is what I found really interesting and how it ties in. It makes sense. Earnings per share growth has outpaced earnings growth by an average of 2.6% over the past 15 years for the median S&P 500 company a gap that may close if buybacks decrease. It makes sense, right? You stop buying back as many shares, you, can't, you have to, each share doesn't get as big of a pie of the earnings. That's one way to grow those earnings. Interesting article. What else we have? News, home builder confidence. We'll bring this headline over. Again, quite a headline. Home, home builder confidence jumping to, I believe, 20 years? Yes, highest level in 20 years. Builder confidence in the newly built single family home market jumped five points in December to 76, highest reading since 1999. Current sales conditions rose seven points to 84, and expectations next month are to 79 as that real estate market jumps on. Disney now with their sixth billion dollar movie of the year, and they have a Star Wars movie coming out, I believe, December 20th. We'll give them a plug. 
Uh, Frozen 2, now Disney's sixth billion dollar movie of 2019, surpassing one billion dollar mark on Saturday. I believe they're closing in. This might have got them to ten billion dollars in just box office sales this year alone. And again, they have a Star Wars movie that's going to jump that at the end of the year. Jumping over to Disney shares this morning. Disney was positive, pulled back a bit, still positive, up about 35 cents or about a quarter percent in the face of a market that's up dramatically. That's pretty muted action. Boeing shares this morning looks like the 737 MAX. They may stop production for some period of time while that plane is out of flight. And it looks like that plane is going to be pushed back to at least 2020 at some time. Boeing trading lower on the news that they may halt production for a period of time, probably to let orders catch up so they don't have the build of surplus. You've got Boeing shares now down 2.4% or down $8, but that's a solid $7. We, did, we were down almost 5% at one point in Boeing shares. Other news, politically, the impeachment marches on. House Judiciary Committee publishing full impeachment report. I believe the full House is going to vote on Wednesday. Looks to be a party-line vote of, of an impeachment of the president. Then the trial heads to the Senate. Interesting to see how that shakes out. Not really a market reaction to that for sure. And jumping around as well, we'll pull up the charts. Some of the other stocks this morning, Micron shares up almost 4% as they get an acceleration overnight, trade higher even from the open. You've got Micron shares right now trading at 53.21. Of course, renewed trade optimism. Even jumping over to Apple, quite an acceleration. This on the heels of the trade deal. Apple, even just last week, Right, we're going back to Tuesday. Now we had almost a 17 VIX at this point, market pulling back a bit. I believe we get a presidential tweet. That was actually Thursday, but we get some news. That's what it was on Tuesday. Even Apple up $13 from Tuesday morning. Apple trading at an all time high at 279.24. Jumping over to some of the other stocks, the tech stocks, Microsoft up almost a full percent, up $1.23. Google shares up about eight tenths percent. Facebook, a tough week last week, of course, reported that they may be under investigation and up about 1.6 percent. And as we come into the holiday season, 12 days to Christmas, Amazon actually barely positive, up about two dollars and 41 cents right now, or just over a tenth percent, pulling back. Solid five dollars, Amazon, on the top of that. Jumping back and checking out some of these, the Dow, new highs as we speak, 28,000. 336. NASDAQ making all time highs. NASDAQ 100, 8603. And have we gotten it yet? Not quite yet. The SP is trading at 3197. Interesting that gold trading right with the market. Usually we've seen some inverse relationships going on with gold. You have gold making session highs for the day, just as the SP is making session highs for the day. Gold just touched 1484. And the Euro US dollar trading at 111.52. If you're out there, check out the front page of TFNN.com. I have a market report up there from Monday. Got a good chart of the markets, oil, gold, the bond, the note, everything going on this morning. And, of course, on the front page of TFNN, running through this week only, check out the Tiger Dollar Sale. Runs through Sunday. You can get up to a 40% bonus on whatever you spend, and that is a double of the normal bonuses, usually 10 15 or 20%. This week only through Sunday, that'll end December 22nd, which is Sunday, pretty remarkable, Christmas next Wednesday, and uh, Tiger Dollars, 10, 15, 20%, we've doubled it, now it's 20, 30, and 40% bonus through Sunday, check it out on the front page at TFNN before that ends. Stay tuned, folks, coming back, Tom will be joining us, we got markets at all-time highs, S&P's up almost 20 points right now, we'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 194, Nasdaq up 83, S&P's up 23, Gold Contract up a buck 70 at 14.82 an ounce. You get silver up seven cents, 17 dollars eight cents an ounce. Light sweet crude flat, 60 dollars 13 cents. Notes and bonds, you get the 10 year down 13 ticks, 128 20, 30 year off 25 at 157.14. And King Dollar, King Dollar down 213 ticks, trading 96 9.58. Euro is at 111, yen is at 109 and a half, and the pound is at 133 to one U.S. dollar. And I just heard that Tom saying that the Dow is at all-time highs also, and that's pretty incredible when you get Boeing. Oh, that, man, right? They've yeah. got a little pop, but down like 2.5%, I think, on that news for Boeing. That's uh, The Dow could be getting quite, yeah, 2. Point, and it's pairing some of those losses, though. Boeing was down almost 5%, no. now down 2.17%. Yeah. That's, that's pretty incredible, man. Yeah, you know, is. So if, if we look at the point side uh, of this, folks, um, you know, but Boeing's putting 49 points in, which yeah. is nothing. Yeah. You know, I mean, for where this thing was. Yeah. And it's you, probably well, only... Well, 227, I think it was at. That's... Yes, that's, I believe so. Yeah. You know. It was, yep. So... It was adding, like, almost double that, right? At least more right. than double that. So. Yeah. So we went to 326. Yeah. Maybe the market's saying, oh, we kind of knew this, maybe. I mean, the production right. halt, a different deal, but right. it makes sense that if it's not going to be back in circulation, not approved, going into 2020, they're probably like, why are we just firing out planes over and over and over? We can't even fly them or sell them yet. Let's pause that production for a couple months to save some of the cost. Totally. Yeah. Inside the NDX 100, the leaders out here, you got uh, Western Digital is up 6.5%. Uh, six six you got Tesla up 4 and a half. You got Micron Tech up 4.3 and Biomyelin up 3.5.
taken away from its small numbers, man. You got PepsiCo uh, down uh, 1%. You get Pfizer, Pfizer, serve, yeah, that's yep. a, down 7 tenths. Um, other than that, uh, bottom line is that uh, you get some action out here, man. The uh, gold, gold contract uh, right now, we take a look at gold. What's going to get intriguing here, there's no doubt that the market's up. You know, gold won't give it up. Um, we had some good volume last week. I mean, this thing didn't hold price when it got to uh, 14.91, but we are pushing into that swing, and it has the volume behind the move. That was good volume. It was 410,000 contracts, and of course, that's going to be about the good old U.S. dollar. So, yeah, under 97. Are we still there? There we go. There 96, we go. 96. Yeah. So it, it broke your consolidation last week. That number is okay. 97, 141. And uh, bottom line is that I suspect we're going to build some cars right now to try to get down to this uh, 95, 843. Yeah, not far, almost just one dollar. Right, right. Yeah. and that's going to be about, folks. This is this is you know the pound broke topside. The pound has broken its downtrend. The euro hasn't yet, but it's very close. I mean, you can you can almost make the case that it has broken it. But I didn't like how the how it actually broke it. Here, I'll show you something here. So I mean, if you actually take this thing and say, okay. On a monthly basis, I know the month's not over yet, but if we take this and we attach all these, you can see it's sticking outside of that. But yep. what I really want to see, I want to see a wide price spread in that bar to get up there like 112 and a half or something. Then it'd be like, okay, you, know, you want to go higher, you know? Yes, so, yes. So, no doubt, uh, a lot of moving pieces out here. The uh, Tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Fred Ernest on. Yeah, so this is the gold CEO. Yeah, That'll be right. interesting. And I know you have Rob McEwen. Wednesday, Wednesday at three fifteen. At three fifteen, right? You know, some of the higher volume equities out here today. Let's take a look. And this is the last trading, last full trading week yes. of of the year, huh? Of the year. I was going to say yeah. of the yeah of the year. So some of the higher volume equities out here. You got Uber up one fifty three, okay. and Travis just keeps selling everything. I there. saw that. Yeah. You know, I saw that headline jumping around here. Um, yeah. Roku, Roku, Roku's up uh, two and a half. You get Apple up four and a half. Uh, Freeport McMoran still moving. That's up 33 cents, uh, 1332. And that's going to be about uh, good old copper. Because watch this. This copper market, man, wants to go. New gold report out today. I'll give it a quick plug, of course. Yeah. Freeport covered in there. Check it out. And you take a look at copper. Okay, so we're over the 180 mark. This is a big deal, man, because... You know, this this baby, HG, let me just do that. i got to do the con the generic contract. Okay, so we're 281.85. Yeah, I mean, this you can make the case this thing wants to go to that 332. Next stop would be uh, 299, but that 332 is game, you know, with... When you take a look at this one, and see, this is the type of break. Now, this is also on a monthly, and of course, we're not over the month, but that's the type of break that I like to see. You yeah. know, you're you breaking that downtrend with conviction. That's, you know, we've just gone from 260 to 282 so far. And, you know, you get a couple, couple more weeks for the month. Yeah. How about we'll pull up this uh, article on Uber? It's interesting stuff, man, being the insider. And uh, they talk about... The current CEO, but we'll get into it. So, Travis Kalanick sold another 350 million more of his stock this month, bringing the total 2.1 billion. He's worth about 3 billion, so now he's only got about 20 percent. It says of his net worth as of now, too, right? right? Uh, tied up in Uber still. Also, co-founder. It's it's remarkable how one guy, you know, he gets all the press. There were probably other people involved in the beginning. They call this person. Have you ever heard of this person's no. name? Neither have I. And somehow no. he's a co-founder. Camp. Yes, and uh, reduce his stake, though not on the scale of Kalanick. He sold about $35 million of his shares, a fraction, excuse me, $35 million worth of shares, fraction of the $2.1 billion holding. Yeah, almost like a drop in the bucket. Maybe he just wanted to buy a nice house out in L.A. for $35 million. If you have $2.1 billion, that's really not. Yes. It's remarkable, though, that they mention the current CEO. Not remarkable, but taken in context, bought $7 million worth. So you have Kalanick dumping $2.1 billion, right. and you have the current CEO buying $7 million. Uh, that's like one three hundredth, just for reference, of $2 billion. You know, one three hundredth. Yeah. So let, let's see who's coming into the largest ownership. Well, look at this. It's so funny. 
No, that's the wrong one. Okay. Uh, Uber. Okay. It's like, who is this Frank Russell yeah, gentleman? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Is he so, cornering the market in Uber? Seriously, man. That's the Russell 2000, of course, <laughs> PHTC. That's pretty funny. Okay, so security ownership, we're at $30 and two pennies. You got, oh, well, there you go, SoftBank. That's okay. Of course, I thought, yeah, how would I forget yep. that? 13%. So 13%, benchmark capital, eight. Yeah. Public investment, that's going to be some public fund. And then there's Garrett, the co-founder. It would make sense, right? You have yeah. the other co-founder dumping all of his shares. And yeah. He's got 4.2% of the company outstanding. Yeah. And there's Travis down there. Okay. Still sitting at 21 million shares. Yeah, 1.3. Let's see. So the latest changes, the buyers, Hill House Capital. Look at this Wellington went in. Holy cow. That's in September. Yeah, we're only in December. Okay. And the sellers, American Capital Group. So that's a that's a big mutual fund out in California. Citadel got rid of everything. Look at that. It's September, right? That's September 19. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in the y'all world and the world of the markets? Uh, bottom line is that you are at uh, all-time highs. We got the Dow up by uh, almost 200, 199. Nasdaq up 91. S&P's up 25. We'll come right back. The TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale is back. For two weeks only, we're offering the largest bonuses of the year on all Tiger Dollar purchases. Normally, you can get a 10 to 20% bonus on your purchase, but for the Tiger Dollar Holiday Special, we've doubled the normal bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars can be used for all TFNN newsletters, products, or services, are fully transferable, and never expire. If you're a current TFNN newsletter subscriber, then this this is a great time to buy Tiger Dollars and apply them to all your future transactions for instant added savings. And if you're considering signing up for any TFNN newsletters, webinars, or products in 2020, then get up to a 40% bonus now before this sale ends Sunday, December 22nd. For all the details and to purchase your Tiger Dollars with up to a 40% bonus, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 186. Nasdaq's up 91. S&P's are up 24. Let's go to our man Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, Jim, what's going on? Good morning. How are you? Good morning, man. Morning, Jim. Great to hear from you. Happy holidays. Morning. Uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Christmas to you, too, man. We're going to make it a great uh, 2020. Yeah, another beautiful day, too, isn't oh. it? Folks, we had weather here, I mean, it, it broke about three weeks ago, but it's yeah. like 75 every day. It's gorgeous, December, man. January, February, those are our beautiful months, and we're, we're enjoying it for Come sure. Come on down right, right now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> totally, man. Um, so, we going right, shopping? Gonna... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We going shopping? Uh, no, I've, my wife's already done it all. <laughs> no, what I mean by Home Depot. We're going shopping. Oh, Home oh Depot. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Home Depot. I was looking at the gap uh, back around uh, 820. Yeah. And uh, I was, it's gotten into it just a little bit. And I was wondering if that would uh, probably be, if you think it'd go any lower or whether that'd be a good spot to maybe buy a little bit. So the gap that Jim's talking about is at uh, 208.82. That, you know, that was sign of strength in August. You know, the equity took off at 199 on August 15th and doesn't stop until 235 going up to September 12th. So we came back down. You got to 201010, 210.61. 210 so 210.61 versus 208. So let's put this on a daily, for, I mean a weekly for a second. So... You, You've come right back into the breakout area. I mean, it's, you know, the 37 million shares, that's when it broke topside, took out its consolidation in August. So we have 37.1. We come down with 34.8. So the real question is, like, can you test the 210 again, Jim, right? That's, why, that's how I kind of look at that. Now, saying that, what, what I don't really looking at this if i go over and look at lowe's i mean i know they're 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 both in the same business the differential is that home depot takes care of more track uh contractors than lowe's does it's it's much more of a not a wholesale but the they just that's that's they what they specialize in and you know lowe's is almost at highs again um you know so i would say that yeah this is not a bad place to bite on it really do you know what i'm saying is You'd want more volume to come in, and you'd have to realize that you can retest that 210 area again. That's kind of where I'd sit with this. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. What I, what I do, not necessarily like, but when I look at volume, you know, we, the, the week that it got smoked um, on November 22nd, we came down at 44 million, okay? And then we came down again hard last week with 34. Now you're going into the 37, but you can see it did have a contraction, but sometimes when it's only like 3 million, it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of volume on the way down. Yeah. It, it is a lot of volume, you know, so that's, that's kind of the parameters. And then what would end up happening, so, so picture this. So your downside right now is, I would say, you know, good $5, right? On the upside, it has to get inside 217 to do anything. There'll be some real heavy resistance to that 217, but if it gets inside it, Guess what? The bottom line is it can go all the way up to the top again, you know. Okay. And I can't quite understand as Home Depot getting whacked like that and Lowe's still staying at highs. Yeah, a little separation <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that, that's a big deal. Um, and certainly the interest rates haven't gone up to kill the housing market. You know, we're still at 1.8, I believe. Yeah, 1.866 on the 10-year. And the way... Yeah, and there was a report out this morning, too, that the home... Home builder sentiment was at the highest it's been since 1999. I think yeah. That's what it yeah. About. There's still what has happened in this cycle is that the amount of permits and the amount of houses that have got built is still dramatically low compared to any other cycle. So the country needs houses. That's that's the bottom line. You know what I mean? There, yeah. No yeah, one's often built. Here, shortage in, in in supply. There's, yeah. There is. There is, especially as a lot of those houses scooped up by private equity, even that, right, and then rented out, so oh, not put on the market. Great, great yeah. point. And yeah. they'll never be back on the market. That's 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 a huge point. The, the the large funds that took those houses, folks, they'll never sell those houses. They'll sell them to another fund because the 
because as soon as you sell them, you don't make any more money, meaning even management fees. That, you know, the, the, that, sure. is, that is like an ETF now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so those houses are off the market, period. If they do ever sell them, the only thing I'd say is watch out because that might be another bubble coming at it if, yeah. if you know, if they yeah. do choose to sell them right. because you're right. exactly right in everything yeah. you say. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. time to go Sounds shopping. Sounds great. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, I'm just a very little guy and I, I don't want to stick my neck out too far so if I do anything on Home Depot it'd probably be just to nibble a little right here and then yeah, if, if no, it did yeah. get above 117 I might I mean 217 I'd probably get in a little more that would be the way to do it because what, what does happen is that then you know you, you really what you'd love to see is a sign of strength too I mean a sign of strength folks means that you have wide price spread, you get an acceleration of volume. It's, get, it's, it's exactly what we went into in August. You know what I'm saying? That was a, that's a real sign of strength. You, you get a couple days, then you, know, you, you jump up uh, seven, eight points, and you have volume behind the move. The theory is, is that that's when a fund is coming in or someone big is coming into the, the, the equity. Do you know what I'm saying? So, But I like the trade there. I like the trade. I mean... You know, something I think about, Jim, so I think about it with, you know, we look at Walmart, we look at Lowe's, right? Yeah. You have, uh, excuse me, you have Home Depot and then you have Lowe's. Right. And you have a similar relationship, I think, of it, like Walmart versus Target, where yes. you have the huge company and then you have the competitor that's a lot smaller that does a great job, though. And I wonder if those companies, what's to prevent the smaller company catching up in the world of online dominating everything? Because they're both going to have everything online. They're both going to be able to deliver it. Why is Walmart so much bigger than Target when you don't need the real estate anymore? I just right. see those trends going right. on. So I sometimes I think Lowe's might be, and, you know, if everything's doing well, and maybe that's part of the reason why you have Home Depot. You know, I mean, everybody's going oh, to start competing because sure. all you need is a website and a, and a factory. And, and, and what happens is that Lowe's has more designer things yeah. for people's houses. They do. That, it's that's, that's more geared towards retail, it I think. Is. I it enjoy is. as a retail customer right. when I'm going in on the weekend. I need a hose or something right. real quick. I need right. some, right. you know, barbecue equipment or a look yeah. at a grill. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Cooking, brother. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Thanks Sam. I appreciate calling, man. I'm still watching you all the time. We, we appreciate, appreciate it, man. Always happy to see you calling, man. Okay, have a good one. Have Thanks, a great Tim. holiday. Thanks, Jim. Totally. Yeah, you know, I think about that all the time. It's just something for people to think it about. Because in general, why are those companies, why Walmart so much bigger? Why can't right. they both just be competing for customers if you have the same thing? Target has great deals, man. Um, oh, just yeah. up to Walmart, you know, and you don't need the physical presence anymore no. when you're almost all competing with Amazon. And I wonder if we're going to see some of those smaller companies catch up. When you have that, I say smaller, still they're 50 to $80 right. billion dollar right. companies, and that's why they're going to be able to compete pretty close. To, and uh, there's no doubt that they can just look at it the other people's inventory, if you're online, well, you can start inventory. And that's what I'm saying, exactly. exactly. You right. know, why do you have so many more sales if you're both basically competing in the same arena with the same product, right. basically usually with the same price? Yes. You know, oh, it's very close. Yeah. They, yeah. They're, they're all coming out of China, man. They're all exporting from China. So it's like, okay, what factory are you exporting yeah. from? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 178. NASDAQ up 90. S&P's up 23. We're going to be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up 186. NASDAQ up 93. S&P's up 25. And uh, the repo market. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be talking about the repo market right into the new year, folks. Because this is so intriguing. You know, I mean, they're being oversubscribed in a huge way. It's become the norm. Oh, yeah. It has. And, and the Fed came out last week saying, they, I mean, they're going to put in like $485 billion. Yeah, it was close to a trillion dollars yeah. in and that bucket. Last night, so what happened last night, this morning, yeah. right? Primary dealers submitted 54 plus billion in bids for the Fed's 32-day term, which, which, excuse me, which matures January 17th. That was more than even the 50 billion. They're offering 50 billion, and they can't even soak That's up all of the enough. market demand. Right. Fourth term offering that is providing funding, funding past the year end. While scrutiny of the funding market's only set to intensify as December unfolds, investors are also keeping an eye on the middle of the month. That's when the market faces potential pressures from Treasury settlements and corporate tax payments. Currently, the rate for overnight general collateral repo agreements is around 1.6 after trading at 1.7. And the worry, of course, is that that's going to spike if the, the market 10%, is not yes, yeah. uh, making it up to almost 10 percent exactly. Um, not only is the reto repo operation fully subscribed, but also the fact that in mid-December, with all of the settlements and all the outflows, you're seeing repo staying relatively well behaved. This is uh, the head of U.S. interest rate strategy at Bank of America. This means we're probably going to be relatively stable. Well, that's one man's opinion. We will yeah. find out. Yeah, concerns relatively. last week that the market may be underpricing the risk of turmoil, that the overnight rates would jump higher, which had at least one analyst speculating the Fed may need to embark on another round. Um, they've they, been, they, it's, it's September 17th. Just and, it. and that quantitative easing now, that's what this is. They, they, and so, picture, a month ago, six weeks ago, a repo was an overnight rate. Yes, right. They, and they, they, they expanded it. Thank, they have yeah. expanded it, okay, yes. but they expanded it. And now they expanded it to get over the first of the year. Yes. So, I mean, that's quantitative easing. There's, there's more money in the marketplace. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. for sure. They need right. to come in with a supply to make sure the market functions. Right. And, um... It's amazing that that spike, time flies, man. We're at literally almost three months to the day since that 10% wow, spike, and okay. we're still persisting. You know, when and that is the day, September 17th, when that overnight rate jumped from 2% yep. to 10%. Um, and before and, Monday's action, the three prior, prior all oversubscribed. 
Right. Yeah. And if we move up a little, and this is what happened on September 17th, folks, what happened is that the tax payments were due. Oh, so now, this, is, this, is, this is important to understand just how this works, right? The way that it normally works, like just even with our payroll, right? You know, we have a payroll service. The money's always, you know, the payroll that's automatic, right? Yes. You know what I mean? But what happens is that that the tax payment is just sitting there until the day that the tax payment's due. Like sure. in, when, you, when you have payroll companies, yes. they take it out the exact same day. Okay. Well, what happens is that picture here in Amazon and Apple, all that money's been sitting in the bank, right? But everything is getting drawn out that day. Yes. That's what, yep. and then simultaneously what had happened on September 17th is that the Treasury came out and was selling 10-year notes as well as 30-year bonds. That's so quite a it, perfect storm, right? It was. They yeah. needed more money, you know. Um, so. And the last thing, just uh, the size of everything, the Fed also conducting, conducted an overnight repo operation Monday with a limit of $120 billion, as with the most recent of these actions, under-prescribed, subscribed, excuse me, contracting just 36. So I wonder how those, in terms of an overnight repo, in that level of 120 yeah, versus... The 32-day repo, oh, right? Oh, yeah. That's, that's the difference that's there. That's cool going, to know. Going through the end of the going year. Going through the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's so that, saying, I don't need this money like right until now. tomorrow. Yes. I need this money for 32 right. days, and I'll give it back to you January 15th. Right. right. That's, that's good to know, man. Because I got confused for a second there, yeah, too. I said, wait a second. Why is all the $120 million? Oh, because right. that's only an actual. This is supposed to be an overnight. Yes. It always was. Yeah. It was a, and everyone's know. saying now, no, no, I don't care about tonight. I care about through the end of the year. Yeah. So we'll... That'll be interesting. No, no doubt. Um, how Disney. about, yeah, how yeah. about taking, let's see if we can find the article maybe on Bloomberg, just referencing it. If not, we'll pull it up. But Frozen 2, now their sixth billion dollar. Yeah, so they don't have a headline. Ah, Frozen 2. Well, there's, you know, it's, it's probably a headline all over. Crosses one billion mark at global box office. So pretty remarkable. Let me see if I can find where we're at here. That. One billion. There we go. I believe they're over $10 billion in box office sales for okay. the year right now, and they have a Star Wars movie. I think the, the final one, should we should get that one for sure. I'm We've sure had we'll a be final one about. for a long time. I know, <laughs> right? Maybe the final of this saga series. Um, but they passed a billion dollars, so they have, and, you know, you just listen to the names. You know, Captain Marvel, Aladdin, yeah. Lion King, Avengers Endgame, Toy Story 4. We're all familiar with almost all of them, and they've all... And that's this year. That's so this, this year. is the sixth billion dollar movie Not of bad. 2019. Not bad when you're pushing out a billion dollar movie just in, and think about it, that's just box office sales, right? Let alone the revenue that you can have in your Disney Plus service. And I haven't and, got my money yet. I want to see one of those. I haven't seen any of those yet. Yeah, I have not seen any of them. I wonder how The Lion King is, man. I, I would like to the see The Lion King, King at yeah. one point, for sure. I was not one of the ones that saw Avengers Endgame. That was a monumental. What are they? Do they get to two billion worldwide? They may have. Um, yeah, so, and this one, Frozen 2, passing 1 billion, and that's from a sequel to the 2013 Elsa and Anna, as we've become familiar, many, even myself. Uh, but Disney, pretty muted this morning. Is that pretty priced into the market? And uh, you check out Disney shares. Talk about a run, right? Just making that high at 153. You back things up to when they first announced real plans. That is when they announced the pricing of Disney Plus going in April when everybody found 17. Yeah, and that's when everyone found out I believe it's going to be like 6.99 or 5.99 isn't even for Disney. So 147 on the dot. Did you get it yet? I have not got it yet. Okay. Nope, but I will be. And I think I'll be getting that bundle Disney, Hulu, ESPN. Okay. For 13.99 I think. That's cheap money. It I is. Know. It is. I know. Yeah. Yeah. The Patriots one, right? Thank God. Did they? I was busy yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they did. I wasn't able to catch well, football we yesterday. Check again. I guess they did the did last quarter, and then I could. I could. They, they weren't on CBS in Florida, so yeah, I, that's I, when I it is tough sometimes. Watching something else. Yeah. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four. We need all the games on Amazon Prime. No. I know we do. Speaking of jumping from Disney to streaming service, so let's go look at the Palladium market because this thing just never stops. Okay, so Palladium, I'll go into the maybe the bottom one active. Okay, sure. uh, yeah, I should have went active. Okay, we'll find out if this is yeah, this is the active one. Oh my God, look at this! It's up fifty-five dollars. This is like so hard to comprehend. Um, look at that, nineteen hundred and forty-seven dollars, and that's one of the tigers. Want to look at the difference between the the spread? Platinum, so I'll do the Platinum Active Contract. 
has a 931. When you see this, this is like, okay, so I'm going to compare this to this platinum. So now I want a palladium. And active. Do you see the active? Yeah, right under there. Right. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so we'll update that. When you see this, this is like pretty sick. So I'll bring this back. Yeah. I don't know. Bring it back 10 years on a monthly or something. No, I'll do it. It only goes back, I think, because you have the first one up there. It's, it's only going back. Uh, well, I just put it, I just changed it to a weekly, so it looks better, I think. Right. Okay, it only goes back like a year and a half. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, the spread is pretty hard, hard to comprehend. $1,000 more than platinum, and platinum, bottom line, is, well, was, a uh, more precious metal. That's was is the, is the number. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Isn't that amazing? I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 190, Nasdaq's up 91, S&P's up 25. And if you are watching Tiger TV, folks, uh, we have the, the spread up in between platinum and palladium, and it's phenomenal. I mean, this is something else, man. Talk uh, about divergence. Yeah. I mean, that's a 10-year chart. Yes. And you're looking when the crossover, just, and just to give you an idea, <laughs> it's, uh, let's see, what year is that? So in 2011, you had platinum at 
1882, and you had palladium at 614. Did I say that right? You got to keep them on the same point of the chart, though. So just uh, hold it right here, right? So where are we right here? August of 2011. You had, yeah, platinum at 1826, I believe. Yeah. And palladium at 756. Okay. And, boy, you can see the shift. It's a slow, gradual one, quite yep. acceleration from 2016. Even that at that time, you had come a little bit. They were both. Let's see. So platinum at 829, palladium at 500, and that's when palladium, more than four, almost four times this, the run from, yes. for palladium from 500 up to 1935 now. And in that time, you've had platinum go from basically 830 to 930. Um, and you really, if we started in August of 2016, that's when you actually had platinum at 1188, now down almost $200 versus palladium from 700 to 1900. Yeah. Hard to comprehend, man. You know, but bottom line is that this is all about cars. You know, and you know, small amounts go in every car. But bottom line is that that supply has changed. It's Eleven o'clock already. My mm. God. Yes, it is. Boy, it caught me too. Oh, it's it quick. Folks, stay right there. We get uh, Think of Swim coming up next. And I'm at Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rose. Day. Wait. We got this afternoon. Thanks, Val. Thanks, man. Wow! Look at him, folks.